you and I were talking pretty seriously about showing the drastic differences between one side of the road and yeah. the trailer park. Yeah. And then right across the street is a mansion or even a neighborhood of right. mansions. Yeah that's, yeah, that's Asheville now. Like, and I, When I was driving over here, I'm like, I see it's coming oh, over here too. Keep on going down the road. It gets real bad if you go on down to Willie's house yeah. and then look over to the, right by the reservoir. You got Willie's house and then you've got this really nice neighborhood. All the houses are like our house. You know, and yep. Willie's a really nice guy, but... It won't be long. Willie's, but somebody's going to offer Willie. Hopefully, he owns some of that land. Hopefully. Hopefully, you know? someone offers Willie. I, yeah. I don't offer him 600000 and he'll yeah. take it, and it's worth one point two. Right, exactly. And I'm just... I'm I, The gentrification is going to happen. Absolutely. And it, Absolutely. It, it, I hate to be this way, but sometimes I'm like, God, that'd be a good thing. And so, you're right. Yeah, there, there's some, there are some upsides to it. Because... My wife's idea would be to take a space over there like that, because mm-hmm. it's like three or four houses, you know, and they're, they're all nice people, but they're not taking care of their land, mm-hmm. and it's just like, they're like tractors and old Winnebago's, and everything's got grass growing up around it, and oh, come on. Right. And, you know, my wife's like, God, they just need to turn this into a park. You know, I'm like, well, the, the soil yeah. might test bad, and but... The, the, and, and, you know, everybody's got their their right to their opinion and at the same time like if you you're looking at it kind of from a 10,000 foot you know angle and that's it's natural it's natural because this is where we are in my neighborhood right there are nice houses and there are trailers whose house do I pay attention to the most though because the trailer the trailer although I will say this the trailers down here are really nice right and there may be a family in there well that's kept. just that's just good as gold, and maybe somebody's in They've there. They've got a pit bull, or and some, yeah. he's a really sweet dog, and they've <laughs> yeah. got a baby boy who's like three. Yeah. And, you know, he works at the gravel yard, and, right. and she's a hairdresser. And and, and that, that life is, is as good as... It's as good as mine. The, or or the, the banker up the street that ran a Ponzi scheme, and now he's got a $700,000 house. $7, house. Yeah. And then the IRS is going to kick in his door in two years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like, it looks great from the outside, right? And and maybe there's an economy there that kind of benefits the, the people around it, right? Because mm-hmm. maybe that helps Willie's trailer value go up one day. God, it's insane. You see? And then... It's insane. This house below us went for like 680 yeah. or something. Yeah. And it's not our house. Right. And our house was half that right. when we bought. That's right. So, you know, there's a... You know, there, there there's some some upside to the gentrification. Mm-hmm. You know, it just depends on how it's applied. You know, and we just want sidewalks. If we can just get some yeah, sidewalks. That's, yeah, that's yeah, that's the tough one out here. I see the really windy road. And I mean, it's it's like we're riding down the road early in the morning. Pregnant woman pushing wow. her baby. Like on, like can't work, even get on the working shoulder. Working out. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I mean, that road you go. Yeah. It's not slow. Right. And, you know, we're mountain driving. It's not a slow road. Straight across yellows. It's not a slow road. No, it's not slow. <laughs> Hear it? Hear it? He's, oh, is that, is that he's a... He's hauling ass, dude. Oh, is that what that was? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was like a diesel coming down yeah. that. But, yeah, you know, looking at, you know, the, the surroundings, man, and, and seeing how they're changing, um, you know, I guess we could relate that to kind of just the, the landscape of the mind, too. Because we're, we're talking about... You know, you there's there's they're they're cramming in so much more in small spaces now. You came through the, the golf course, I guess. Yeah, you the density. That? Yeah, it's the density. Four hundred thousand dollar homes right there. And some of them look like chicken coops. They do. They, they're straight up and down. They got a lean-to roof on it. <laughs> ten. You know, ten yeah. lean-to. A lean-to roof. It like, looks that's like that's the chicken. easiest roof that you could ever put on a house. It's like the. It's, it's like, like what? Type, there's no engineering involved. It's funny, you said chicken coop. Yeah, you know, this side you go up a foot. This side you drop it a foot. Mm-hmm. You run a beam that way, you know, 16 inches off. And it's called run. style. Yeah, exactly. It's more contemporary, right? That's, yeah. It's simple. Vaulted ceiling yeah. inside. Yeah. They've got one bedroom, one bath. That's right. And see, if you really look at it for what it is, right, it's such a sham. You know, because like the, the the houses that we grew up in, most of the beams were cedar. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or, or good like houses red oak, brick. stuff like that. Brick. You know what I mean? I mean. You had like tornado, cinder block. Tornado come through, be fine. You know what I mean? Now... Everything is um, wood that's brought over from overseas. It's all China. It's, it, take a weight. You could probably go back over time, and I'm sure somebody's done this, and just weighed a two-by-four from, like, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, so on and so mm-hmm. forth. And I bet you they've gotten so much lighter and they've cost so much more because they've genetically well, altered. $8 a 
Oh yeah, wood is as good as gold. It is. Yeah, but they've genetically altered the timber. You know what I mean? So it's like it grows fast, but it's not as dense. Like you can look at the rings in between, you know, like the, the growth pattern. And so if a really horrible storm comes, the lighter the product, the less likely it is to survive, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, there's no, yeah, I mean, it's yes and no. It really, it really just depends. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm not a... I mean, you got a that scientist or whatever, but you got that bamboo thing right. going on, and so that's strong. Right, but you do have some, you know, engineered, you know, wood materials that are lighter. You know, they got glue in them, and they bond and they flex, et cetera, instead of crack and break, you know, break off. But I don't know if that's technically better. Like, what's, you know, what's worse? Is it better that it flex or better that it just go ahead and break? Because you know, I have to ask a builder. You know what I mean? But like, that's what we're getting into, just as far as like the way things are going in life. Like the quality of material, you know what I mean. Now, is this a direct result of our relationship with China? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't. Well, if you am think I, about this, am I wrong it, to always blame China for everything? Yes and no. Because <laughs> think about it, man. Um, what what is at its core? What is, what's the reason for people manufacturing in China? Anything? I guess to save money. It's greed. It is greed. It's greed. Like. You know, they, they want to blame China for being the land that said we could do it cheaper, right? But at the same time, on no, who's, no. Right. Who's on whose back? That's right. And then at what cost to those people that are, you know, at what human, you know, capital cost to those people and what human capital cost to us? Because if you think about it, nobody's saying blame the business owner for saying you don't have to make $3 billion this year. $1 billion is okay. Like, that's enough. It is enough. <laughs> That's enough. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, unless but you're it's never. To go but, to space, I guess. but it's but never enough because their competition is human nature. Their competition is going to say, "No, three billion is not enough. We're going four million. Well, it's hardly three billion. It's like three hundred seventy-six billion. Exactly. Now. now, yeah. But yeah. when it started, you get what I'm saying? Like when yeah. you know the businesses started going overseas. Numbers you can't even count. Yeah. My problem is. <sighs> but economics doesn't support. The rules of economics won't support someone doing well, that. Well, we're American, and on the top of the surface is these racial tensions about slavery and the past. Yet we are being delivered goods from a nation or nations mm -hmm. where slavery is commonplace even today. Yeah, and I mean, you got to look at it all. Um, I, I don't think anything, any one aspect of it is uh, exclusive. You know what I mean? But at its core is America, though. You know what I mean? And, and uh, the system that we live in is a great system, okay? Best country in the world by far. Okay. But we have some major issues. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of times, like I'll give you a prime example, like the whole immigration <clears throat> aspect, right? People coming from Ecuador and, you know, South America coming up. But they're coming because of disparage. But if you really think them. about... In the grand scheme of things, if we're, you know, this is a world, you know, that is getting smaller and smaller every day. It feels that way. If you think about it, well, perhaps if one country didn't put pressure on another country to do X, then you know, we didn't have to worry about the why these people are coming, you know, from South America up. I mean, because if you look at their exports, I mean, if you look at those, these countries that are in trouble, what are they exporting? Like Venezuela specifically? Right. Or and, like and, Nicaragua, and who is importing it? What's what? what are their well, what are their primary exports? Well, think about it. You got cocoa, mm -hmm. right? So consumer bananas, bananas, coffee, coffee, big deal. Any type of agricultural product that you can think of, and then the the biggest thing is like seasonal workers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I I really don't think people take into account how much of the you know GDP is actually on the backs of or off the backs of migrant workers that come up here because I don't know too many people that are going to, you know, pick tomatoes, strawberries, uh, oranges for 16, 17 bucks a day. A day. And a that's day. like and it's like yeah. it's like how are they getting by with that being that oh, they're, it's all under the table cash and No, no, no. No. No, I mean, no. It's not even me. They the come over here on work. They come they come over here on work visas and they get all type of, you know, um, special special interest groups have lobbied to have 
migrant access to migrant workers and not have to pay them under the federal, the DOL. Well, that's its own laws. form of slavery, isn't it? If you ask me, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, some of these regulations need to be, you know, strictly enforced. You yeah. know what I mean? So, Who's going to enforce them? I don't feel like the current administration is. Well, it's, I don't. I don't think any administration is to like point the blame on. Like it isn't. You know, it, it isn't as as granular as people that are in office. Mm-hmm. It's it's every American citizen um, that pays taxes. You know, like they need to put the pressure on their elected officials to make sure things get done. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that, at its core, that's democracy. But I would, I would never, I would dare say any one administration. I don't, I don't really care what administration you name. You're right. Right. Um, the people apply the pressure, but at the same time, how do we really apply pressure? Because you can look at me and actually tell how we apply pressure. You know what I mean? Like we apply pressure by the things we wear, by the things we eat. So, like, if you wear Nikes, you're right. adhering to Nike standards that's for right. the workers that they that's, hire. That's right, and it's not it's not just Nike. It's not just Coca Cola and the not, big ones. It's not. It's, it's all of them. It's but then again, it's it's our appetite for things, right? It's our appetite to consume. You know, that's really getting the world in in trouble. You know what I mean? Because if you know, if people start thinking about you know maybe buying smarter things, not eating, you know large quantities of meat you know what i mean because that that's another aspect you know it's also horrendous like if you really go yeah. and look at what's and happening seafood, in the meat industry seafood too though yeah the overfishing the overfishing you know people are eating you know subgrade food they don't know about it because regulations aren't as strict as they need to be etc mm-hmm. you know at the end of the day um we all got work to do you know what i mean and it's not it's not just it's not any administration it's not any department well how do we do that on a grassroots level i think that the awareness is here i think everybody has in the millennials for sure yeah, the, they're the, all so yeah, exactly. like we know about it yeah even yeah it's like we, we get to the point where we know so much that you know you're the expert on this or you're the expert on that like you're the guru on this and no one wants to you know acknowledge the fact that you know well the, the, the information is important because of the application. Mm-hmm. It's not important for the sake of, you know, knowledge itself. It's the application. So if you think about how much information we have available, right? We have a lot of information. We have a lot of information available. We even know aliens exist now. <laughs> but how much of that do we actually apply? I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, we, we know pretty well, like, certain foods cause cancer. Yeah, well, even certain certain groups of people who sell fast food, that technically is a cancer-causing agent. That, that too, right? We, we know these things, right? But the ultimate, you know, infiltrator of, of all plans, you know, to do things, like, really good is money. 